I don't get to spend as much time doing science as I would like. What I love to do more than anything is shut the door of my office and go onto the server and look at the data that people are generating and really sort of revel in how far we've come. We've been thinking about this, in particular Derek and Jeff have been thinking about this for over 20 years. We knew a lot of the background and we knew the limitations of the, the current technology. The term gene editing didn't exist. We called it genome engineering back then. It was a very, very small community working in the field and had this sort of crazy idea that we could go in and change the DNA inside of a living cell. We believe this technology has the potential to do just an incredible amount of good in the world, for us to overcome certain diseases, cancers, protecting our food sources, and other applications that we haven't even developed yet. The most important thing has been building the best team in the world that can really do that. In 2004, when Jeff and I first started playing around with the beginnings of the Arcus technology, what we had was essentially a recipe book, if you will, for all the different ways that we could change this enzyme and make it cut different DNA sequences. Did you try to publish this work that happened to Duke? We did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> what we were writing challenged a lot of dogma in the field mm -hmm. and therefore must be wrong. The fact that we could not publish made us hunker down, uh, in a way, do better science. We had to really prove the data. I think the fact that we had to fight for it really builds my faith in the technology and what it can do because we've dug so far into it. Nobody was giving us money based on what we were promising. People were giving us money based on results. Remember this day? Yes, this is uh, the group of us celebrating signing our agreement with DuPont. So we, we signed this deal, and, and then you heard some, some news. Yeah, there was a global press release that had just gotten sent out from a competitor accusing us of patent infringement, and that's when the lawsuit started. While they weren't the largest company out there, they were certainly much larger than us. You know, mentality was, look, we've got something really good here. There's a reason why they're attacking us. There's a reason why they want to take us out. Our response was to give them the middle finger and fight back. Never in my wildest dreams did I think it would take five years to get through. And I certainly didn't think after the first lawsuit was stopped that they would try it a second time, and then a third. When I think about those years, you know, for, for folks like me who were just trying to do our science, I don't think we ever felt worried by it. <laughs> which, which, again, looking back, is kind of ridiculous. Without Matt stepping back and saying, we're gonna get through this, let's sit down, let's put our heads together and come up with a plan, we wouldn't be here today. Matt, when you look at that group, what do you see? What do you think? It's inspiring, it's humbling, um, because this isn't just a big group of people. These are some of the best and brightest in their field. The fact that, that they want to be a part of what we're doing is, um, is really pretty special. Dedicated to improving life sounds cheesy, but I think it's, it's really appropriate for what Precision's mission is. One thing that I think is very true about that statement is you can't say it if you have an ounce of cynicism about what that means. And what we have got is a, is a company of people that proudly wear their sweatshirts with that motto emblazoned across the back. I'm as excited as I have been from day one. The motivations, I think, have actually remained remarkably consistent. We want to find the tough problems and solve them. This is, uh, this is not for the faint of heart, and you can't fake it. You're either all in on this, or you don't fit here.